Do we know who Thomas of Monmouth was, the author of Life and Passion? Who was not he? Not at all, not at all. Uh, one scholar in the 19th century tried to suggest that he was a local boy and to take the word Monmouth. Monmouth is, is a town in Wales, um, in, uh, in the southeastern of Wales. And so one historian in the 19th century or one writer in the 19th century claimed that it actually refers to some village in the vicinity of, of, of Norwich's. No reason to think that's the case. Um, we know nothing about him and everything I was able to surmise about him was simply deducing from his style of writing, his literary references, but what's important about him, I think, is that he was a new boy in town. That is to say, the, the great monastic institution that was the Norwich Cathedral Priory. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Uh, he joined it. He had joined it recently. And I think we all know when we join a new, new institution, we became we become sort of avid explorers of its history. Oh, what place is this? You know, the college we go to or the workplace we go to. We get very interested, want to hear a little bit about the past. And and I think that's what he did. He came to um, this um, cathedral. Now, I should just say that cathedrals are not monasteries. Cathedrals are in the middle of, middle of cities. They're very much urban institutions in the world. And monasteries are supposed to be, you know, away from the world, exactly to get away from sin and from all the distractions. But in England, they're developed in the 10th century, a particular model whereby um, the cathedrals were seen to that they could benefit, actually, from the priests within them, would benefit from living like them. They would benefit from that greater rigor, and that was applied in most of the cathedrals in England, not all. And that is why we get, for example, in Norwich Cathedral Priory. So we get Norwich Cathedral, which is the head of the administration of the church in that in that diocese. But the priests within it also behave as monks. So they have a cloister, for example. That's again typical of English cathedrals. They have cloisters. Why should they have a cloister? A cloister is a feature of the monastic living, a space for meditation for for quiet reflection in that sort of very nice structure of the cloister that of course universities have inherited and so many universities try to recreate that all across the world really these sort of cloister-like reflective spaces so um in england as i say they tried to marry the two and it wasn't without tension because how can you be a monk when you're in the center of town people coming into the cathedral visiting praying i mean all the distractions of the world and, and in this case, it, it became very clear that that was, that was so. But that was the situation. So you have the Bishop of Norwich in the cathedral, and he's also living with, and in some senses is head of, a monastic community. But the also very important thing to remember there is, uh, and this is relevant to the sort of community that Thomas of Monmouth joined before he started writing, is that Norwich is not an ancient cathedral. It's a quite new cathedral. It was founded a whole generation after the conquest in the 1090s. So as cathedrals go, it's a young cathedral. It doesn't have old traditions. It doesn't have the sort of big, famous you know, pan-European pilgrimage sites, say, that people come to. It, its identity was sort of unclear as to what is it for? Why should people be interested in it beyond its administrative structure? And I've always thought that that the reason why it seemed so attractive to have this cult of a little boy, this unlikely martyr, this unlikely saintly figure, which of course, who of course never received any form of uh, official recognition in the normal way that saints are recognized in the Catholic Church at the time. It was attractive because they really had nothing else to make them famous, and this was a chance to develop a cult. And we can see how important cults are for, uh, for the viability and the fame and the success and the prosperity of a cathedral, if we just look across to Canterbury, where in the 1170s, the cult of St. Thomas of Canterbury, was killed at the behest of King Henry II, became a martyr for that reason. It made it into a truly pan European saint that did pilgrimage all across the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so it was a cathedral without a cause, in a way. And Thomas of Monmouth created the cause. 